it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. I want to be really clear about something. You are not allowed to leave (laughs) again, ever, without me. You know, I shared that text with the other ladies I was working with. Guess what my bestie just sent me? And they're like, oh. (laughs) It's not okay. I'm sorry. I need to. And we didn't even talk nothing. We need to talk about it. Okay. 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 So you went on this. A work trip. Yeah, whatever it was. (laughs) Something. And you went to the airport, Mm -hmm. our airport. I know. By yourself. I know. Did you buy the snacks? No. Good. No. And and definitely did not get apple juice. You better not have. And I definitely I didn't I didn't even go to Dunkin' Donuts because no, that was sacred. No, no, nope. we don't do that. Nope. I did buy a smart water at the shop. We That's don't. Fine. We don't go to. Okay. Down at the end. Oh yeah. Because no. I was traveling Southwest. You don't travel yeah. Southwest. No, we don't. <laughs> no, I do not. No, I do not. <laughs> we traveled. We traveled Spirit and Frontier once. Never no, again. No, nope. nope. I said what <laughs> jank ass ridiculousness did you get me on? I got you on a straight flight. We're not doing that ever again. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I get here too early? And I have to walk my luggage everywhere. They have a Until, limit on when you like, can check your luggage. Whatever time I can check in my li- what you don't have a holding tank. I'm confused. Yeah, it, you know if you can actually fly a jet, they give you a better price just in case. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need—a private jet. Did you? Did you, we were both like this? <laughs> we were both like contemplating. How do we do that? How? What? Who gets the license? Me or Rebecca? <gasps> Definitely <It's> you. Me. <laughs> you don't even let me drive the car. It's so it's Watch me. out, motherfuckers. Here I come. Here I come. Here I go. Here me. I go. <laughs> One me. time I had to go on a, on a call for work, mm-hmm. and I said to Rebecca, you're going to have to drive us to the next antique shop because I need to be on this call. She's like, okay, okay, I got it. I got it. So she gets in the car. She's got to like raise her seat up me mm-hmm. really high. She's got to put her glasses on. Like it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. I am in the, <laughs> I'm in the passenger seat. On the, on the computer. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. I, I was the, yeah. I was either on my computer or on my phone. And I'm like, yeah, I happen mm-hmm. to have this meeting. Mm-hmm. And she's, she's again like 10 and 2. <laughs> she's up here like this. She's real close. And I see her looking to the right, looking to the left. Look into the right, look into the left. And now it's a main road, 55 miles per hour. There's nothing coming. Not you true. Guys. There is nothing coming. And if it is, it is the furthest away spec you can possibly imagine. Like, you're not sure. Is that something on my glasses? Stop or it. is that a it car was coming, coming towards us. that far in the distance? And she, <laughs> she, she says... Cover your kids' ears here. She says, here I go, motherfuckers. <laughs> she puts her foot on the accelerator and it goes, it goes like this. <laughs> We're talking this thing barely moves. It is like, it is not even as fast as a bumper car at Sea Breeze. It is... So, this is going I so slow. I didn't want and you to be I, obvious that you were in the car on I'm your phone call. Looking at her, <laughs> and she deadpan. Here I come, they're fuckers, and she is. Ee. And I, I say, put it on mute real quick. I put it on mute on my phone, and I'm like, good thing we had time to turn there because <laughs> <laughs> she was real proud of herself. Listen, so now I'm a really good driver. Every time I am driving. 
I make sure that I use that phrase at least once. <laughs> Here I go. And I put the pedal to the metal and go literally three miles per hour out of the parking lot. <laughs> Not okay. So, so back to the codependency. Back to the, <laughs> back to the official. Listen, it's know, it was I not know. okay. I know. I had zero feelings about it Until. when you left. Mm-hmm. It was fine. Mm-hmm. I was fine about it. Mm-hmm. That first day <laughs> when you were not in my vicinity, mm-hmm. I had a visceral reaction to it. Mm-hmm. It was. I'm not kidding. It is not okay. Mm-hmm. And my favorite part is I knew you were because it was all lowercase letters when you said, how's it going, period. That's all you said. And I'm like, it was definitely a question mark because I would never have asked a question with a period at the end. Just want to be really clear. But But it was lowercase. It wasn't like, how's it going, question mark, explanation. It was was very much like, hmm. But that was was for you because I was like, I'm feeling all the feels (laughs) and I don't know if you're okay right now because that could have a tendency to be an absolute disaster mess. Right. So I'm like, are we okay? How's it going? Right. You didn't answer. Probably because I was traveling. Then what? Then you send in all capitals, angry. Yep. How's that going? How's it going? <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get 30 calls in a row. Yeah. Because you know I was busy and I, I had know. to drive. And I, then. Nope. 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 None of that was okay. <laughs> I did not like it. I did not like how that felt. Mm-hmm. I did not like knowing, is she okay? Is she not okay? Mm-hmm. I did not like that I was not there. I did not like that I was not experiencing the things. I was not going to help, but I need to be physically present. I know. And was it really, was it a knife in your heart when I sent you the Bucky's picture? I didn't like that. I know. I know. I know. Because we Cause like you, Bucky's. you went to Bucky's. <laughs> I know. And then I convinced myself you went to Bucky's by yourself. So that made me feel better. I did. Nobody Good. was with me. Good. I That's got brisket what I told on the myself. board. Good. Oh, did you? Brisket, brisket on, on the board. board. <laughs> Do you know that? Did you see that I sent you the help wanted sign? And you can make $150,000 being the car wash guy. What? Yeah. You didn't read it? No, I missed that. What do I have to do? Be you, the guy who sprays the back of the car? No, I think you have to like manage Operate the people. No, I think you have to like manage the people. You're like That's in, fine. You were like in charge of the car wash. One hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to manage the car mm-hmm. wash mm-hmm. in Done. Texas. Done. I know. I'm pretty sure if you cut brisket on the board, it's fifty grand. Wow. I, mean, I know. I mean, I pretty much got you an application. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We're moving to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving to Texas. Well, speaking of codependency, let's 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 ask the cards. If we are codependent. Yeah, right. Do you want to pick it? It is fine. We don't need to ask the cards because we're really clear what <laughs> the answer is. But I want to know what is. the cards say because... But I, I wanted you to know that um, it was not okay and it's not happening again. No. I will go and I'll just sit in the hotel room by okay. myself. Okay. But it's really not okay. Okay. I did not like how that field at all. Okay. Field. field. I did not like how that field at all. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I was worried. You're going away tomorrow. I know, but I'm only going to Buffalo. Oh, you can, you can drive there if That's you want true. to. That's true. I'll meet you, you for were dinner. In, frick, it was not okay. No, Texas. I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like how my heart felt. Mm-hmm. I didn't like how my gut felt. It was not okay. You know, I just got that 360 app. Do you know what that is? No. Oh, it's like a stocking app for your family. Oh, yeah, we got that. Yeah. What? So you yeah. can track where your family is on the phone. It's literally like if you're driving the car, it's going down the street. And my first instinct was Aaron and I need to have this. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because you don't always know where I am because right. you manage my calendar. Right. So, so I there's need to know. times that you'll say to me, <laughs> right. hey, are you at such and such a place right, right. now? And I'm like, no, why? And you're like, well, it's on your calendar yeah. at this time. And, and for whatever reason, thing. it dings, like I'm supposed to be there. And then yeah. I get nervous. I'm like, is that mine? Or I don't know why yeah. that happens, but yeah. it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm on this 360 app. And when I landed, I sent the screenshot to Philip saying, I'm here. And it shows me in Texas and him at home. And I just thought... Karen and I should have this. Yeah. So then she okay. knows just, where I am. Screw my family. No, because then you'll know when I'm at the Hobby it. Lobby. I know. No. <laughs> Never mind. We're not doing that. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm Never like, mind. hey, what, what's going on right now? Are you um, working on that meeting? Yep. Absolutely. It yep. says, boom, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> at the Walmarts. <laughs> okay. Ask right. the cards if we're codependent. The answer is yes. You're going to pick it, though. Okay. We have had a um, <gasps> cards weekend, man. It's not good. You've had multiple readings from not just me, but from other friends of yours. And it has, but it was very, very helpful. Sometimes oh. we need the cards to give us some guidance because you can interpret the cards to be whatever you want it to be. Right? For someone who's not into the hippie voodoo shit. I know. You I were all, all in. in this weekend. All in. Because it's all helpful. In. It was 
intense. Right. It's, it's a helpful guide. And sometimes when you just need clarification or with the affirmation cards. So these are just little tools that we utilize. I mean, she's going to yeah, call me Kelly up the street uses. I know. It's a whole different ball game. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you just lay that pattern out? Oh, I'm sorry. Out of like 10 cards are eight of them swords. Mm-hmm. I know you're going to cut a bitch. She when she she said and she doesn't really fully remember these things after when she gives the reading, she just gives the reading. Right. Mm-hmm. She doesn't fully remember. She said, I know she said as soon as she puts that out there. Oh, it's not good. Wow. Heavy. I feel a great sense of heaviness mm. and mental anguish mm. is what she said. Confirmation right there. Just what? right there. What? I know. Okay. So sometimes it's just really helpful to use these as a guide. I mean, come hippie voodoo show. You want, oh, you picked that one. Okay. That's it. That's the one. Imagination. Hmm. Look at it. It looks like us. Interesting. Which one? Are you the dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right on my back. I can carry you through life. Here I go. <laughs> so um, just so we're clear, I had to switch to my mermaid cards because that's much bigger writing. Yeah, couldn't see. I couldn't see anymore. So, all right. So it's the page of cups. Now, here's the thing. I don't really know anything about tarot cards. I don't understand what a cup is. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming swords is yeah. anger. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Or like, like stabbing. All sorts of Cups is maybe sharp. make sure it's full yeah. or not. Or maybe it's just yeah, drink good. the blood of Christ. That's, I don't know. Yes, good And job. then I'm not even sure You're what really a um, pentacle is. Yeah. Is it a coin? No clue. No idea. No clue. I just like what these have to say. But you, you <laughs> are basically... A first degree witch, you know. I'm a wannabe. You're you're on your way. I'm a I'm a wannabe and need to be trained. So yeah. anybody out there who would like to give me some insight? Yeah. Okay. Okay. By the way, I downloaded four books today. Just wanted to let you know. Wow! Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You so, read books? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of you when I when I downloaded them. One of them was the new Britney Spears book. Hundred percent. Oh, I saw that today. Can, cannot wait. Yeah, I saw that. Wait. All right, page of cups. <clears throat> Are we codependent? This is the question we're trying to answer. This is imagination. A young person or someone who is young at heart has much to offer you and others. Good company, fun, and friendship. He or she also brings you the message that love is coming your way in the future. When this page arrives in a reading, your creative projects will also flourish, and so will your finances. Advice. Enjoy the lighter side of life. Allow yourself time to play and let your imagination run free. This is kind of on par with some of the things. This is like the positive message out of (laughs) what we were asking the cards this weekend. Oh, this one's saying be more carefree and fun and frolic. No, (laughs) no, it's it's saying um, get creative. Don't allow it's okay to go out of your lane. Oh, it's okay to okay. take advice from okay. others. Okay. Maybe that's where the codependency comes from because I'm the imaginative well, creative you one. You are the dolphin. You <laughs> are the like, free flowing dolphin. Come and, on, girl. and I'm like, this is how you write a dolphin. Right. Exactly like this. <laughs> there is no right. other way you write a dolphin right. except like this. Right. Yep. But think about that. Is Scott, Scott, are you talking? No. I do hear men talking in the background. Who are you talking it's, to? There was guys out in the hallway. I had to tell them to, to leave. Oh, there were people trying to invade our podcast. Tonight. <laughs> it's probably my neighbor who's trying to conduct business outside of a podcast studio. How dare she? Oh, well, Jeez. well, I swear. Did you, you lay the, drug did, you lay, <laughs> did you lay the smackdown, Scott? I no. Do you tell I'm him not a smackdown kind of guy? Did you say, oh, well, you, I know I one I person like who might feel a little different. <laughs> did you? Yeah, exactly. And I said, in the future. Yeah. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In the future, take your conversation elsewhere because yeah. these girls are having a podcast. Oh, I went back and I, re- I rewatched that and I and I compared notes and, and you misquoted me. But we'll, we'll talk what about that. What do you time. mean? About the in the future? Yeah, it says for future podcasts. No, it, it did not. No, yes, it, it did not. No, it, it did not. It, that's what it said twice. It said that. It said that twice. I need you to go back. This is what happens. This yep. is such a great, clear example of what happens. This is why people don't argue with me. Mm-hmm. I need you to scroll up in those messages, Scott. There were two times that you talked about the future. The first time <laughs> is when you said in the future question or in the future comma, comma whatever you said, and then the second time you brought up for future podcasts. <gasps> All right, I'm not looking for it now. 
Hey, I believe you. I Thank believe you. you. Thank you. I'm I'm happy to keep going toe to toe about this because I'm, sure I'm you are. so clear <laughs> that you said in, this in is the future. Down. See, this is my strategy. Plus, I, I'm I'm derailing what you're doing now, so let's not talk <laughs> well, about. Well, right it. now I'm putting on this nasty ass roller ball. <laughs> you need to have that. Is this so, like an, a holiday uh, from 1987? Nope, this is a different one. No, this oh, okay. is not good. This is not Pound Town. This is Pound um, Town. That was the cherry. What is this one? This is expression. It's the throat one. It's it smells like a cleaning solution. Mm not great mm-hmm. it's because you need it i know so this card again i'm finding it really interesting because we asked it if we were codependent and i i mean it pretty much it's not saying it's not confirming whether we're codependent but it is confirming that we both need each other in order to survive mm-hmm. in terms of because celebrating we're our, our all assets. clear that that card is not my typical card right Right. The free flowing creativity. No. I mean, Let's you are think creative. Outside the box. Yeah, I'm. I'm creative within bounds. Right. Not right? when it comes to painting pottery. No. Whatever, Chris. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway. No. So we were chatting about which um, chakra oil we should use. And she already told me that I couldn't use the. It smells awesome. <sighs> you already told me that I. Oh, it's so bad. That I couldn't use the root chakra. Nope. You said that one's too, too, you're too rooted. You're too rooted. You're too too rooted. rooted. But what's interesting is we were talking about how you had an epiphany this weekend that you are not really great with the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And when you try to set boundaries, people don't necessarily honor and respect is probably the wrong words. Maybe not, but but they don't take them seriously. Recognize it as a boundary. Right. Mm-hmm. When to me, they're crystal crystal clear. Mm-hmm. So this this um oil today is our throat chakra, which is about expression. Mm-hmm. And oh god, the reading. The fifth chakra is situated deep within the throat and controls It's vital areas around the neck and mouth. It is the center of expression and includes listening as well as verbalization of our emotions, thoughts, and feelings. Alignment of the chakra improves our ability to express in a higher form of communication with the confidence and authentically speak what is truly in our hearts and minds. Now, you do not have a problem communicating. Correct. That I don't believe has ever been an issue. But I do feel you can be derailed. Mm -hmm. or people can come in and say one thing where immediately you're derailed because you feel like you're not honoring other people's emotions. And then all of a sudden yours takes a back seat and then you're right back in. Yep. One of the things that we clarified over this weekend, which is I'm really both excited and nervous about putting this forward on the podcast because It is something that is so new for me Mm. that I'm working through it as I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. And that's not my usual MO, Mm. right? Mm. I usually am like, so here's the lessons that I learned from such and such. You didn't realize that this podcast was actually therapy for you. Oh, yeah. I'm very clear now. (laughs) That every (laughs) single one. This is all just one big therapy You thought you were going to school my ass. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'm like, oh, you're the one who's dead inside. How about we just talk about that? And then now the whole podcast is about how my empathy is completely toxic. And maybe we should like rein that shit in. Right? It's fine. It's fine. But one of the things that I've noticed over this weekend, and this is going to sound much more harsh than I mean it to be, but that my... Uh Sorry. <laughs> what? I was just relishing in the idea of something coming out more harsh than you th- than you meant it to be. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I felt that in before. the future? Yeah. Me? <laughs> like what, Scott? Could you give me an example? <laughs> no. Check the text messages. It's, it's um, three quarters away down it says. All right, go back. In I'm the sorry. future. I'm sorry. I'm I'm derailing you again. <laughs> so, um what I have realized is My empathy, without a doubt, is something that could heal the world. Mm -hmm. It genuinely comes from such a caring, loving, kind, supportive, um, impactful place, Mm -hmm. right? But when you are that person who is that incredibly empathic and raw and vulnerable and unabashed 
is the word that I, I want to say. Do you know what that means? No, it I don't. means... Um, you don't bash people? Unfiltered. <laughs> it means... So, well, there's a couple people in the world who would disagree with that statement, but um, it means free-flowing. Okay. It means uh, un, uh, limitless. Okay. Right? Okay. It's here it is. It's here for the taking. Mm-hmm. That the world around me is a context in which is not necessarily ready to accept that and handle that. Mm. Accept it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Handle it, not really. Well, because I think a lot of people experience conditional love mm-hmm. or conditional respect yes. or conditional. There's lots of conditions associated with expectations. Absolutely. And so therein lies a problem that I'm just trying to be me in a world that doesn't have great acknowledgement or understanding of how to accept that level of empathy Mm. and care. And in that way, that relationship, it's not just me being that way to other people or the other people being that way to me, but the relationship between the two is what creates some degree of toxic empathy that is really unhelpful for both parties. And when I say unhelpful for both parties, this is part of the new learning for me, Mm -hmm. right? For me, it's unhelpful because I will give until I have absolutely nothing left. Mm -hmm. There isn't a filter on that. The time I will notice it is when I'm literally in a hospital bed. When it's too late. You know, it's way too late Mm -hmm. to have reined that in Mm -hmm. because I won't stop. Mm -hmm. And it's not helpful for the other person because they're not used to being in that type of dynamic. And so it's flooding and it's new and it feels so seen and wonderful and great. But then when I've not managed that properly on my side, I then have to start to take some steps back. And then I've almost shown them this version of what can be in the world and then am not able to either continue maintaining that or they're not able to continue holding that. And that's not fair to either of us. Mm -hmm. So that level of what I'm maybe correctly, incorrectly referring to in my mind as toxic empathy is um, something I'm really trying to understand. Well, and the growing pains is going to be, you're going to feel the difficulty in that. And you're going to have to sit in that. It's almost, I was, when you mentioned this the other day, I'm like, when we're on our next trip, I want you to wear a rubber band on your W. Elbow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm going to snap that every uh-huh. time. And it's going to not feel good because it's going to uh-huh. be consistent. Uh-huh. It's going to be Always. constant. It's going to be so often. And that's part of the problem I is know. because you're so, it's just, it's like smiling or yep. it's like breathing. Yep. Right. Because it's so ingrained and so natural. Um, one of the dumbest examples is you going above and beyond to like randos in the checkout counter. I know. Rain. That's where you have to start practicing. I know. I know. I know Renee had said the same thing. She said that the problem is when you go to some place like Dunkin' Donuts Mm -hmm. and you can't just take the change back. Nope. And you can't even just, when you're on the phone with me, you'll put me on pause I to know. interject and or not. Interject, no, no, no. I will include you be, in the right, conversation. Right, right. How often does that happen? I'll be going through the Every Dunkin' day. Donuts drive through mm-hmm. and I'll be like, hey, Sam. Hey, Morgan. Mm-hmm. Rebecca's on the phone. Right. right. And then what do they say? Hey, hey Rebecca. Yeah. But we also establish part of your problem is you are a creature of habit. Yes. And you go to the same Dunkin' Donuts at same the exact time. same time. So it's always the same people in the shift. Right. It's so not like you're mixing it up. An opportunity right. for closeness and connection. Right. Just so we're real clear. I know these people. You became really good friends with the cashier at Panera who came to your wedding. I was in her wedding. And you were in her wedding. I know. Yeah. So if that provides any I know. sort of context. I know. If that's that's it right there. Uh, is that I established a she relationship was a with the cashier at, at Panera. Panera. You did not know her in any other context, but the no. fact that you went there every single day. Then she came to my wedding uh-huh. and then I was a bridesmaid uh-huh. in her wedding. I know. 
And then I was with her as Mm -hmm. her partner was pregnant. Uh Uh-huh. And Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. (laughs) Do they have support groups for things like this? It's me. (laughs) It's me. I'm the support. I'm the only one sitting there in the middle of a lonely circle, just looking around. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. But Mm -hmm. this is, I really think that this is so important (laughs) to unpack. It is a problem. You can't make this shit up. I know. You can't make it up. I know. (laughs) There's so many examples. I know. I'm going to keep those to myself. Mm -hmm. I know. It's just so important for me. But, But like Renee was saying, Renee's like, you can't just take the change. Right. You can't just be like, here's my 10. I get four dollars and eighty nine cents back. Mm-hmm. Right. Hand it to me. Thanks, say thank nice you day. and walk away. No. Nope. Right. Mm-mm. You have to. You're handing me the change. And I'm like, those nails are so cute. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, my gosh, did you see this quarter? This is the one that has the bear on the back of it. Did mm-hmm. you hear about this? Mm-hmm. But see, here's the <laughs> again. There's nothing wrong with that. But now you've established a relationship and now you have to go back to that person every day because you feel guilty if you talk to someone else. It's it's the pattern for it's me. Not, it's not as much that as it is. I have to go back to that same place because right. that's how my routine works because I'm right. so black and white. So now you continue to be authentic and genuine and engaging. And that's what takes it to the next level. Right. Cause then the next time I'm like, good morning. Right. And they're like, Hey, let's be real clear. Normally those people aren't like me. Who's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then don't engage with you. They always engage back. I know if I was the cashier and you said that to me, I'd be like, thanks. Bye. I know. (laughs) I know. I wouldn't engage with you. But the difference, the difference in that is that, you don't feel no. this innate need no. to have to connect or see with that person. Right. You, Even you, being on the receiving end. Correct. Right. And I, if if you're going to say to me, I really like your, your sweater, mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, thank you so much. I, I got it at such and such a place. Mm-hmm. They, I got it a few years ago, so they probably still don't have it. I could give you the whole context mm-hmm. around it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and it really comes from this drastic place of being seen mm-hmm. and making sure that people have some type of connection. I think that's what's super important to me is that people don't feel lonely. They don't feel that might be the only connection that they have during the day where they feel that level of connectedness. But you're absolutely right. If that happens once at 7-Eleven, if it happens at Core Life Eatery, Mm -hmm. and then it happens randomly at Walmart, Mm -hmm. great. Right? Right. I dropped my little sprinkles of whatever, wherever I need to go. That's healthy. That's fine. It's okay. It's when it's the pattern. But it's when it's repeatable over and over again. Mm -hmm. And you've now established a relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And then where it becomes not fair for that person is either I have too much going on Mm -hmm. or I can't continue to give at that level. Or to your point that you said the other day about the boundaries and about the what are your personal values? Mm -hmm. My inner circle doesn't get everything that it needs. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm making sure that so and so at Panera feels really great about whatever. But I'm it's again at the cost of my myself. Well, reality is you have. You have only so many hours in a day. You Mm -hmm. only have so much energy and you have to allocate it appropriately. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard for someone like you because in your opinion, everybody deserves everything. I agree. And but what did we decide? Work. What did we decide? Which part? That this (laughs) is so innately subliminal. Yes. That I have to go to hypnotherapy. Yep. I was going to just say, I'm like, did we decide that you, you need the therapy? Yeah. That's what we decided. Yep. As soon as we're done with this, I'm connecting you. Mm-hmm. And I truly feel, and what's going to be beautiful is you're going to be able to share the experience live with our viewers. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Guys, come on in. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, but you'll be able to experience what your, how your transformation is happening I versus know. talk therapy because you are a therapist. I know. You've done some serious, not just serious, like work in terms of your degree and like learning all those things, but you've also been in therapy. Therapists should be in therapy, right? All yeah. this stuff. Yeah. And you've had some great experiences. Yeah. I just think that this is going to be next level. Yeah. Good I luck really being do. a therapist, finding a therapist. I know, especially you. I know, especially me. Ugh. It's not okay. No. But my one, my one guy. I know. He's Steven. Great. Mm-hmm. Loved Steven. But I feel like this is going to be I know. right on par. And reality level. is 
reality is you can go through the hypnotherapy process yep. and then you can go back to him yep. and debrief the whole thing. Yep. Because we know they got to debrief that. I, even, I better, no, I better, I better do with you. You better, you better tell take me, some time yeah, off. I got to look at your calendar. When you take got that damn appointment, off. I'm going to have to clear my afternoon. I know. I'm going to be I like, I'm coming over. Thing. We're going to listen to my audio. The whole thing. Great. Then I'm going to be reprogrammed to be like you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Guess there's two people sitting in the support group. You and me. You and me. Yeah. I think I think you're going to notice. Yeah. We've game decided changer. it's so mm-hmm. because what we were talking about yesterday was trying to figure out. So where the heck is this coming from? What what is is this? And it doesn't feel like a me thing. Mm-hmm. It feels like I, what I said to, to Rebecca was it feels to me like a past life situation where I was something. I, you called I, yourself a leper. I think I call myself a leper. Mm-hmm. I think I was a leper. I was really not okay. Mm-hmm. And that everyone just shunned me, mm-hmm. wanted nothing to do with me. Mm. Was not, it was, ooh, like to avert your eyes. It is not okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and who knows? This is, I could just be, how come none of this shit this comes up in, in your readings? Because my, remember we talked about yesterday how I even confused the the root chakra, oh, even my own root chakra yeah. is like, girl's got it together. Yeah. She's totally fine. And then the yeah. root chakra is like, she confused us. <laughs> That's right. Because your energy, your energy is so thick. Interesting. My energy is. I'm finding a past life. Very, you know, person. I'm all set. I It's completely fine. And, and let's be clear. I don't want to paint this picture that I am inauthentic and like no. a hot holy hell mess right for no. the most part i am just very stable very whatever oh, this yeah. is like a next level for mm-hmm. me of trying to really unpack where is this empathy coming from mm-hmm. and this desire and need for empathy and the fact that i will do it at all costs yeah i will impact the most important parts of my life mm-hmm. for empathy yeah why i don't know and i think that that's that it's so buried deep in your subconscious, whether it's your inner child, whether it's a past life, whatever it may be. And the only way to get to it is through, in my opinion, hypnotherapy, because you can access the subconscious. And I know for a fact, because you're just like me, you are a visualization, you are articulate. It, things will come to you immediately. And then you will be like, oh, it will be like that. Ah, mm-hmm. And it will be the most weirdest, mm-hmm. stupidest thing. It's mm-hmm. probably what was your Cabbage Patch's name? Courtney Smoke. It's probably Courtney Smoke. I know. The fact that I lost her when I was in kindergarten. It's probably that. It probably is. And I found her at the shops on West Ridge. Oh, you did find her. <laughs> you did. I said it's that one right there. I know. I said, I wish I walked into it that booth and I was it like. It wasn't her though. I would know oh. in my heart if it was her because mm-hmm. she wore corduroy overalls. Well, somebody changed her clothes. She's in the witness protection program. <laughs> 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 they had to cut her hair oh, and dye it. Smoke. Corny smoke. So it could be something so stupid like that that um excuse me. I'm sorry. It could be something that's so <laughs> deeply rooted and meaningful <laughs> that you lost your baby doll and you in felt kindergarten. like a mom. Yeah. Who I mean it could steals a baby doll in kindergarten. That's savage. Oh. That's savage. And in, in, in what? Like your some your parents didn't recognize football. that? Mm-hmm. Stole, some old lady stole my football from my front yard when I was like six years old. So you know the feeling. She didn't want you to play anymore? That's your trauma. I don't know. <laughs> That's maybe your trauma. A, maybe she had a grandson that wanted a football and mm-hmm. she didn't think I wanted that Go one buy anymore. one. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Nancy. Mm-hmm. Go buy one. But it could one. be something that, that simple. I know. That completely it's, derailed. Well, it... it, it forced you to develop mechanisms that you didn't realize you developed. Yeah. And then you unfortunately respond. That's the first thing she said to me as a hypnotherapist. She said, whatever problems and issues you're dealing with right now really don't mean anything. And there's no point in talking about them because they're just a, it's like a domino effect. Yeah. We need to go back way back and heal whatever that was, because that changes the trajectory of everything. Mm-hmm. And that's why you don't have to have conversations with people in your life because things just change. Right. And it's so true. Because it shifts. It just shifts based on your subconscious change. Mm-hmm. It just changes everything. Mm-hmm. It's so it's so crazy. It's so Did crazy. Did I tell you? So um, before, well, when I was going to see Stephen, um, we were doing IFS therapy. Right. Did I talk about that? The mm-hmm. um, interpersonal family systems. Um, and did I tell you that? One of the visions that I had, because it's basically like deep meditation, Mm -hmm. hypnosis kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you about the gnome? 
Uh, no, you told me about the dining room table. The dining room table? Mm -hmm. What about it? You don't remember? No. Or maybe that was <laughs> something I did. I swear <laughs> to God, you said something about, he said to visualize yourself and you, you, whoops, described a dining room table with people sitting around it in a specific order. That wasn't you? No. <laughs> This is someone else's Are unpack. You sure? It's fascinating. Tell me more. <laughs> no, it was you. And then you talked about the specific type of table. No, it was you. Are we sure it wasn't you? Yeah, we didn't do any of that. Who was around the Nobody table? Nobody would be around mine. <laughs> yeah, except for me. It was, no, it was you. And then you talked, what, are you sure it was a gnome and not a um, 100% soldier? 100% it was a gnome. It wasn't a soldier? Oh, I do. There was a show soldier as okay. well. Okay. So there was a time where there was a um, one of those Russian soldiers, soldiers. with the Russian hats. Yes. He's my protector. He's right. the one who's out there. This is absolutely nobody comes in. Mm -hmm. So I talked to you about that one. Mm -hmm. And then there and was the one time. I don't remember the table. I, d I remember talking about the table. Stop was it, it my table? Yes. No, it wasn't. So I just like some flash just came to me like a psychic sense. It was really weird what just happened there. Because you told me about it. That's weird. You, but I didn't remember you buried it. it. Yeah, I buried that right in my subconscious. Yeah. There was another time, though, that um, it was me in a very dark room mm -hmm. that had bars on the windows. It was water dripping down the side. It was. Um, you mean like that first escape room we did? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, because that's what I'm visualizing. We gotta right do another now. one of those. I know. By the way, we're really we haven't like the Joneses to get to, next to week. Go to another next one. Wednesday. Oh, we're doing it. Yeah. Oh, you didn't tell me that. I can make that studio an escape room in like yes! two seconds. Yes, Scott. We'll be in here every single day. We'll give you feedback. You're going to need to constantly be turning those stories because we love those. Um, but it was cement wall blocks and I was in the corner. I was wearing black. It was a frayed outfit. I was cowering in the corner. My hair was incredibly long. It was very wet and I was in the corner and there was a tiny little spot of light that was coming in that was not focused on me. It was next to my body. Mm. Talk about visual. That's right? why I know you're going to nail this. I know. So that was something that we had processed mm -hmm. and we had talked about and that image continued to change. So he would say yes. things like, where are you in the room now? Mm -hmm. Right. And after certain events, he would say, let's go back into that room. Where mm -hmm. are you standing? And eventually mm -hmm. it was to the point where I was literally standing in the middle of the room in a full on outfit. It was mm -hmm. a dress, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. So like that level. That's exactly what hypnotherapy is. Yeah. And it, it, was it changed, it's shifting right in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then what she would do is once you got to the place where you were dressed up and nice and in the light, then she would start reinforcing the positive affirmation. Yep. Yep. I, I am love worthy, it. I am worthy of the light. I am strong. I am whatever it is. Yep. And then you go home and you you re-listen to those autos with just that. You don't yep. relive all the yeah. the work. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. work is done. Yeah. You relive yeah. the positive piece that you concluded to in the end. Yep. I love that. Yeah. You're going to you're going to be it's, like it's how it's do I contract so, with you monthly? <laughs> yeah, right. It's so transformative yes. because you're just not, I remember times that I was like, it was not like an out of body experience, but I really wasn't fully present in that moment of what I was talking about. It was just really impacted by the imagery yep. of what I was feeling yes. and seeing it's and how it clear. was moving and how it was changing and how, right. Mm -hmm. And a good part of IFS is trying to figure out how you take that internal sense of who you are mm -hmm. and bring it into alignment with itself. Yeah. So that you are responding from that place instead of from your protectors. Yep. So what I think is fascinating about this is I had done IFS way before you had done hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. You did hypnotherapy. And then now here we are, however many years after we've both done it, mm -hmm. coming to this same conclusion mm -hmm. that there are these alternative forms of therapy. Mm -hmm. Talk therapy is great. It is. I'm a huge fan of talk therapy specifically as a starter yes. with a really unconditional loving person who's able to hear you and see you. And it gives you context to sometimes we're not aware of what the real issue is. Right. They allow you to get to the root of what you need to work on. Yep. Or and, theme. Identify yes, themes. Yes. Because I don't think we're all willing to admit that's the vulnerable, vulnerable part, right? It was hard for me. I remember walking into there and I knew what I wanted to talk about, but then having to talk about it mm -hmm. really put me in a bad place. So I, I, I get all of that. Yeah. And then with the dad's group that I'm part of, they do the psychedelics and they go mm. on these 
journeys, which is the same sort of concept of yeah. it allows you to see things differently, allows you to process things differently. It allows you to um, potentially witness or experience something that you can't see in like the normal realm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what you would just life. Mm-hmm. Um and so someday I'm not ready for that. No. I'm I'm really afraid of what will come up. I was afraid of hypnotherapy That's what a little you're bit. You're afraid of? Of what will come up? You're afraid of what will come up? Yeah. I'm afraid my ass is in a hospital somewhere oh, because they they overdose. They me. overdose you. No, I'm afraid of what will come up and what will I, what will I have to come face to face with. Really? Oh yeah. I'm not ready to go there. So are you saying to me that we started a talk therapy, <laughs> then we're both going to do like the hypnotherapy IFS, and then in like a couple years, we're, we're on some crazy ass. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in Peru. We're, well, let's go. <laughs> Give me you, with this you think, frog. Yeah, you think you're going to Miami. <laughs> nope. Give me with the dirt frog right in my butt. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Drink this tea, Erin. Tell me how you like it. You're like, who's that guy in the corner? It's no one. It's, it's a shaman. Yeah, it's something you're <laughs> making up. You're like, what's that mattress on the floor with the garbage can? Nothing. <laughs> Just drink this tea. Just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> That's next level. Speaking of poison frog in your butt, I have to talk to you about a story about my butt right now. Okay. So you were wondering and Scott was wondering why yeah. I was walking like I was a 75 year old person. And you have an emergency appointment today. I have an emergency care pressure appointment this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Here's why. Mm. It has nothing to do with a poison dart frog, but it does have to do with my left butt cheek. Oh. Okay. And it wasn't sexcapades. No. Oh. Nope. It was not sexcapades. too bad. Yeah. <laughs> sexcapades. <laughs> That's why I said you on the way here. I'm like, legs too high. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you are in your forties. Stretch. Bent over two, please. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do the stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, no, so I was in the chiropractor like last week and I'm laying face down on the table and she's doing all the things that she has to do. She starts up here. She sure moves her way down. Positive. Okay. I'm going there. I'm going there tomorrow. Stretch massage. Angela. I can't. I can't. Okay. I am. <laughs> I Renee, bet you are. Renee got one the other day. She left me a voicemail telling me how great that massage was and that it was a next level experience. Mm-hmm. I bet. Okay. Angela, Chapa Fellas, uh-huh. Buffalo. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it. In the in the uh, barbershop. In the back of Chapa Fellas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it again tomorrow. Stretch me out, Angela. <gasps> Stretch me out. Oh, okay. So I'm laying face down on the chiropractor table mm-hmm. and she's going down my left side and she gets to my left butt cheek oh, boy. about halfway into the butt cheek. She pushes with her thumb and I just about roll off the table. I am like, that is so painful to the point where I was like, you have to stop pushing on that. I am. That is not OK. What is that? She's like, you have a massive knot right there. She's like, that is pretty incredible. That is is not okay. Hmm. So she's working on it a little bit. And I'm like, you got to retreat. too much. Because it's too much. Right. So she keeps going, does the rest of my session. Fast forward to Friday, last Friday. Uh So last Friday, I'm at Nina's and I start to feel this burning sensation in my inner thigh. My left inner thigh. <laughs> burn, 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 like a burning <laughs> ring of fire. It's like that. Not your butthole. No, my butthole, not nothing. It's my inner thigh. Okay. 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 And I am like, this is not okay. What is going on? Why is this burning happening? So here I am, got my underwear on. I got my sweatpants on. I dropped my sweatpants mm-hmm. real fast. Mm-hmm. And I said, I need you to look at my left thigh. On the inside? Yes. Like where they would rub to get chafed. Where yours rub, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, very well. Where Got yours it. burn chafe rub. Chafe, okay, where right the chafing where occur. Got it. it would happen. I know exactly where it is. Yes. Uh-huh. And so I I have my pants dropped mm-hmm. and she's like looking and she's like, I, I honestly don't see anything. I'm like, look from up here. Look from the upper part. So she comes behind me. I'm like, I want you to look down. How did she see your, past your tits? I know I had to pull them in. <laughs> And to pull them in. I bet you did. I said, I look like this. Look, look, quick, look, look, right? I'm like, look down here. She looks, she's like, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. So you it's thought it was like a so, rash? I didn't know. I thought maybe it was a rash. I thought that it looked um, swollen. Hmm. I was like so confused. Like, did I get bit by a bug? Was my underwear too tight? Like all of these <laughs> things are what I'm thinking. Your crabs went down. <laughs> down oh. to your thigh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> they migrated no. down. That's not it. <laughs> so I'm like, God, this is this is not okay. So we continue about the night. We go do a couple things. We come back. And now the outer part of my thigh is on fire. Did the inner part stop? Both oh. are flaming. Okay. Both of them. Did you take an anti-inflammatory? Like, this is not okay. What the heck is going on? This is not okay. So the next day, I end up sleeping on it. Um, Nina gets me some Asper cream. Oh, yeah. You're probably super familiar with Asper cream because <laughs> you're of the age where you use this regularly. I do so not. You mean like I icy hot? did not realize at this point that it might have something to do with the butt situation that the chiropractor Yeah, pushed. I wouldn't have thought of that. It's no. in a different area. So I take the Asper cream and I put it on the spots that are burning. Sure. I put it on my, my thigh. Okay. Right? And on like my lower back area. Okay. So it doesn't do a whole lot. I wake up in the morning, still not okay, burning. Hmm. I go to the couch, I lay down on the couch and Nina brings out one of those like, oh, like, like a like a guns. massager, one of those mas- massager. massager guns, mm. right? Mm-hmm. We know what you use that for. So, <laughs> <laughs> did you clean it off first? Don't chip a tooth. <laughs> Can you even imagine that? No. Like a yikes! <laughs> Crotch punch, boom, <laughs> coming at you. So, um. I'm laying on the couch and I have my hand back like this. And Nina's like, just give it to me. Give it to me. So Nina now has the the little machine mm-hmm. and she's going on my lower back and she ends up hitting that spot on my butt. Did you about go through the roof? And I'm like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That hurts so bad as she's on it. Mm-hmm. We, we said she's pounding my ass at this point. As she's pounding my ass. <laughs> Pound town. <laughs> she's pounding my ass. The burning starts to go away because she's on that Nerf specific or whatever. spot. Ooh. Right? Mm-hmm. So I then realized that I have to put the asper cream on my actual butt cheek. Mm. And now here I am. What is this? Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Now it's still... Bad. Last night, I used the pound town again mm-hmm. on my butt, mm-hmm. and that did not go well. And mm. then I tried to stretch it. That did not go well. I mm. used a heating pad last night. That did not go well. So now I have to schedule an em- emergency chiropractor appointment for this afternoon. And in this moment, my entire leg, all around the leg, outside, inside, almost over to my lip. <laughs> My left lip, Jesus. burning. Now, do you know what I'm going to say? Burn, 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 burn. It has nothing to do with your ass cheek. Oh, what is it? Or... What is it, hippie boo? What is <laughs> it? has nothing to what do is, with a pulled am I channeling? muscle. What am I channeling in my You are hanging cheek? on to what? some emotion and you oh. need to release it. And it's oh. trapped in there. It's trapped in my butt. <laughs> yep. Because. Why is it trapped there? I don't know why. There's a, there's a reason it's trapped there, but I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you, if you go to the chiropractor for a second time and it still doesn't feel better, it ain't physical. It's it's some it's an emotion I have to release from my butt cheek. It's an emotion you have Wreck to release. Them. Hell, it damn near killed him. Ah, ah. No, it's just an, a trapped emotion. It could be in your tooth. It could be in your eye. It could be anywhere. It's a trapped emotion. I'm telling you right now. That's it, everyone. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> I'm going to give you this book. It's called The Emotion Code. Yeah, it's good. Does it talk about your butt cheek and your burning thighs? No, but it does talk about this woman who had hip pain her entire life, and it turned out that her mom used um, cloth diapers and stuck her with a pin when she was a baby. I can't. I can't. Okay. Okay. I can't. You can deny it all you want. Whatever. And when you come to me next week and you say, I released my we... emotion from my butt cheek. Can you we know talk what a little was? more about that? It was anger. <laughs> it was well, a lot of anger. You did have a, a pretty of, difficult week. A lot of anger. Which one of these two affirmation cards do you want? That one. This one? Mm-hmm. I am magnetic. <laughs> I know that I will attract everyone and everything aligned with my purpose. See you later, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you for coming. 
Hippie voodoo shit is always open. I am magnetic. I know that I will attract everyone and everything aligned with my purpose. And I'll also find some other people along the way who I want to tell that they have really nice nails because I got to make sure that they feel good. <laughs> Does Aaron have an emotion stuck in her ass? <laughs> We're asking the pendulum. It says yes. It sure does. It yeah. sure does. Yeah. Too bad we can't ask the pendulum what that emotion is so that I can release you can. it. Aaron. Or Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> pendulum. Is Aaron's emotion stuck in her ass? Anger. Oh. No. No. Is Aaron's emotion stuck in her ass? Sadness. No. No. Is Aaron's emotion stuck in her ass? Fear. Yes. It's fear. If that doesn't explain everything right now, I'm not sure what does. Keep Turn your face. it on. <laughs> like the light switch. Twice. Are we Turn clear? Turn it on. <laughs> Are we like clear? the light switch. Did you notice I use my left hand, which I can't do I anything with my left hand. I don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All I don't right. want to talk about it. Why don't you just swallow it some more? Maybe your boobs I are hurt now. I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. Look how gigantic I look. Oh, wait. That's my. This it's thing. your coat. <laughs> that's your coat. Yep. <laughs> angles, I'm telling you. Angles are doing real well in here, Scott. I'm telling you right now. Are you, are you, at what point do you just. Maybe we should take a quick okay. break. <laughs> Maybe we should maybe we should take a quick break. You think? Let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor, Concern Center. Oh, we like them. They're rethinking how to connect people with the resources and support to live happy, fulfilling lives. That sounds a lot like our podcast. Don't push it. You know, Rebecca, every organization has people that need help finding support. Students, employees, patients. I don't need any help with patients. Patients. <laughs> Concern Centers helped 3.5 million people find support nationwide, with more becoming a part of it every day. It sounds a lot like our podcast. I just said that. The More Love Podcast is all about people connecting with each other. So if you or someone you know is involved in a university, a company, or health system that needs a better way to connect people with resources, please reach out to connection at concerncenter.com. Help us get everyone connected with the help that they need. Well said. Back to your ass cheek, baby. <laughs> What at what point? Never. <laughs> Next. Okay. <laughs> at what point? If anybody what? else needs some answers to their problems in their lives, just send me a DM. I'll tell you right away. I am magnetic. Uh-huh. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I am um Are we gonna talk about what you made me do on the way to work yeah. today? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna end today by talking about the fact that, one, you're never going anywhere without me again. Mm-hmm. Two, if you do, I will show up. <laughs> I will show up. Okay. Everyone will be surprised. Mm-hmm. And then you'll be embarrassed because I'll make you come pick me up at the airport. That's and fine. people will say, well, where are you going? And you'll say, oh, actually, Erin huh, actually had to come in. Mm-hmm. Well, for what? Oh, well, she's um, having some codependency problems. Mm-hmm. And I have to go pick her up at the airport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to be friend. at that meeting. Mm-hmm. Today, right, busy, right. I'll call. I'll phone in from the car, and then I'm going to show up. All my bags. I got my sunglasses on. Yeah, I'm like, so I ain't doing, doing anything work. here. You'll be doing work on the beach. Yeah, because my next trip is to the Florida Keys. Oh, good. Oh, you excited about that? Wait, one? wait. The one with me or with someone oh, no. else? With my work. Oh, great. With your <laughs> other job. With your other job. I'll be at that one. I'm going to that one. Okay. Do you just book my flight. Okay. Okay. So when we were talking about that, I said, I have a quiz I need you to take. (laughs) And this is what happened. I looked up, I Googled, how do I know if I'm codependent (laughs) in a relationship? Do you want to know the very first thing that came up? A quiz? The National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Stop it. What? Stop. I'm not kidding. If you Google, how How do do I I know know if I'm codependent? So then, of course, I had to take a minute and be like, what is the relationship between codependency and suicidal ideation? Right. Mm-hmm. So I went down that rabbit hole sure. for a little bit. Uh-huh. But very shortly after that, came up with a quiz. Oh, good. Now, I thought this was going to be a quiz mm-hmm. associated with codependency. Like, are you codependent? As, and a, as a human if, being? If yes, mm. to what degree? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't. What it ended up being is an attachment style. Which is what even is your better. attachment style, <laughs> which was a little more crazy. Yeah. So I took it first mm-hmm. 
And um, I have to tell you what my what my attachment tell everybody, style is. We answered the questions based on each other, not yeah, on yeah. our yeah. husbands. No. Right. No. Duh. So are we are we codependent with each other? Right. And it was it was it's the first question. Are you in a relationship? If so, is it a short relationship? Only a few months? Has it been quite a few years or are you married? Right. And I said, your choice is we're either married right. or it's been a long term relationship. Right. So I picked a long term relationship for both of us. Okay. So this is what I found out about myself. So there's like, um, we'll put this in the Facebook group so that people can take, take this their quiz own quiz. for themselves as well. Because I actually found it pretty, pretty fascinating. Yeah, it was. They were pretty um, interesting questions mm-hmm. related to codependency. So are related <laughs> to attachment styles. Okay. So at the end of the questions, I think there might have been 30 questions. Mm-hmm. True, false. Yes. True, false. Yeah. True, false. Most of them. Some of them were like, yeah, most of them were mm-hmm. true, false. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It has you put in your name, your email address, Mm -hmm. identify that you're not a robot, Mm. and then press submit. Okay. And then it says, Aaron, are you ready to feel connected and empowered in your love life (laughs) with you without the conflict and stress? Learn your relationship patterns, and they're shockingly accurate. Oh. I'm like, here we go. Mm -hmm. So you want to know what my type is called? What? Fearful avoidant. What does that mean? Yes. Thank you. Fearful. Avoidant. That's not you. The weight. Okay. 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 Stop. Stop. Oh. You have a fearful avoidant attachment style. I'm going to reveal for you what this means. You often want to connect deeply with others, but you get cold feet when things become more serious. Mm-hmm. Once a relationship gets more serious, emotional chaos begins and you start going back and forth in your mind between wanting to stay and wanting to leave. Mm. You are often the overgiver in relationships to the point of feeling resentful and burnt out. Resentment can cause you to become angry at times and express your emotions in unhealthy ways or to just shut people off completely. Mm. You notice any shift in a partner's behavior at times causing you to feel suspicious and on high alert. Your freaking eyebrow goes up one half of an inch too much. And I'm like, oh, let me. What what are you you doing over there? What's going on? Uh Uh-huh. It can feel scary for you to rely on others and ask for help or favors. You find yourself struggling to trust that relationships can really work in the long term. You can fear abandonment in times and also find yourself feeling incredibly betrayed by others. You may struggle to feel, you may struggle with feelings of guilt and shame. Having a fearful avoidant attachment style can feel as if relationships are chaotic and challenging, but it doesn't have to be this way. It is absolutely possible to get a deep connection you need in relationships without fear and without losing your independence, your sense of self, or your freedom. If we were to take a survey of all of our listeners or people in your lives, every single person would say that is not you, but it is. It's me. I know. But every you, that's not how you present. No. Really? You really think I present like that? No. Wait till you read yours. Oh, shit. Because yours is fascinating as well. No, that one, the fact that it's basically like you are afraid that you're not going to have your needs met. Mm -hmm. You um, are you talking about me or you? Me. me. Oh, yeah. Very hot and cold Mm -hmm. in relationships, right? Because of your desire to constantly want to protect yourself. If that person's not giving at the level you're giving, you have to immediately shut that off. Mm -hmm. Um, The feelings associated with struggling to trust people. The shift in people's behaviors, because I'm a highly sensitive and alert pe- person, I can see and feel every single thing. You yep. know who else is a highly sensitive person? Mark. Mm-hmm. So please express for me what it's like in our household mm-hmm. when both of us are constantly antenna up, high mm-hmm. alert, mm-hmm. and we notice just the tiniest little minute shift mm-hmm. in someone's personality, behavior, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we are skeptical of it. Yeah. More like, what does that mean? What is mm-hmm. going on? going on is she okay is she not okay right it's Mm -hmm. just this constant live wire Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so i read that and i'm like that's fascinating talks a little bit about what your um what your attachment style is what the attachment style of other people are and you can even go further in this associated with figuring out you know how how do you find that out Mm -hmm. so 
Now let's do yours. I'm oh, great. Okay. I had you take the same set of questions. Mm-hmm. You have an anxious, preoccupied attachment style. Your fear of abandonment may be getting in the way of you forming healthy relationships that last. How do you feel right now? I don't love it. Turn it off. Mm-mm. <laughs> you want to go to the bathroom. You're an extremely empathic person who has mastered the art of connecting with others on a deep and real level. You may be a social butterfly or deeply value being in long-term relationships. You're an expert at reading people and are the people your friends turn to when they need help. Yet, ironically, your relationships are often a huge source of pain in your life. You want me to stop or keep going? Because you have such an enormous desire for deep connections, losing the people closest to you is one of your biggest fears. This deep fear causes you to do whatever it takes to stay close to them, even if it means sacrificing your own needs and boundaries in the process. Y'all done yet? Want me to keep going? Your underlying fear of abandonment is amplified in romantic relationships, especially when you find yourself dating someone who likes their space, someone who isn't very emotionally expressive, or someone who doesn't appear to really need you. When you've met with these situations, you constantly feel like you're giving and giving and giving, but getting nothing back in return. All of this leads you to wonder, why aren't I enough? Still keep going? It's fine. There's still two more paragraphs. Because of this internal struggle, it's, un- it's common for you to become angry and resentful towards your partner when they're not meeting your expectations. Not knowing how to express yourself best, you make pick fights with your pons- partner constantly, pushing them away only to reaffirm your beliefs that you're going to be abandoned and end up alone. The last part is about the personal development school and how they have a tailored tailored program for your ass. Yeah, well, I'm not going to it. I know you're not. (laughs) Why do you make me do this stuff? Yep, I know. How do you feel now? I don't like it. Yeah, of course you don't. Turn it on like a light switch. I keep talking about my trapped butt cheek emotion. Yeah, Yeah. actually. Now you want to go back to that, don't you? Yep. I'm not about, okay. I'm not ask the cards. So not okay. So anyway, just to clarify here, you are anxious, preoccupied. Mm-hmm. That and makes a lot of sense. I am fearful avoidant. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I will put the link to this quizaroo <laughs> on the Facebook page so everyone else can take it and ruin their day as well. <laughs> What was the other one you said? Don't look at this, but you sent it to those me. Those anyway. were my results. Oh, those were your results. Yeah, I accidentally sent you my results, oh, and I didn't I, want you to see it. I didn't look at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Your picture is on the anxious connector one. This is your pictures right there. So anyway, if anyone else wants to ruin their day, just check out our Facebook page. Make sure you like and share our podcast. Do all the things because you know everyone needs to hear this random ass shit that we talk about on a weekly basis. <sighs> yep. And if you have pain in your body, it's probably because you've been emotion trapped there. It's trapped. Mm-hmm. Get your get your trap stuff under mm-hmm. control. I'll post, I'll post the book, Emotion Code. I think <laughs> that's what it's called. It's outstanding. Have a good day. I loved that. Me too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all this empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, The Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.